Hey everybody, um, I'd like to know how to record the sound today so I can talk to you while I do these uh, little demos. Um, I'm following on from uh, the first size Transform uh, little short introduction video. Uh, we're going to look at some more details of the options that are available um, and uh, see how they affect things. So we'll go to Resolume where we have our widescreen composition uh, suitable for an edge blend loaded in and these two pips um, well actually there's three pip positions um, uh, there's a sense pip here as well that we're not currently using um, and uh, we've got uh, some content loaded in um, so there's a few things that change how uh, how stuff works and can make it go wrong um, that's worth having a look at um, the first of which is the scale button here, um, which changes how the clip um, is scaled within the composition. Um, so if we click that, you can see that it makes it go wrong in various different ways. Um, it's a little hard to see with this video content. So what we'll do is we'll swap that for something that's a little easier to see. Uh, we'll just drop Flossy straight on top there uh, and now we've got a much easier to see uh, thing um, so you can see here this is scaling um, these numbers here are based on the size of the composition um, which is a little counterintuitive and not necessarily helpful um, um, we switch through the various different options you can see um, this is just stretching it to the full size of the comp um, this is leaving it its native size which um, this media is 1920 by 1080 um, that matches the shape of our, our slice transform so it, it fits um, but is is kind of pipped in there because of the way that the height um, is interpreted from the, the uh, composition settings. Um, so to make them fill the pip, um, the setting that works is to uh, scale at aspect ratio to the full height of the composition. Um, you don't need to remember that. You can just click this button until it looks right. Um, so there we go, that's the one that looks right. Great. Um, if we scroll down to Slice Transform here, um, there's some options uh, here for how the scaling <laughs> is interpreted by Slice Transform. Um, so we can uh, see that most of those are kind of, they might have their purposes they're not necessarily what you want for doing a basic pip so we stick with fill, we've then got options for flipping um, the content in various ways um, and we can of course turn off or solo individual pips and indeed delete them um, we'll keep them both the same way around currently so uh, so yeah that's, uh, that's some of the scaling things um, another thing to work, watch out for is that um, you can see at the moment we've got slice transform underneath the regular layer transform or the, the um, clip transform controls. If we drag those to be the, in the other order, you'll see that it goes wrong again. Um, and then this button just doesn't have no, it doesn't work. It doesn't, and you can see that there's some kind of scaling around the centre of the composition that's going on. Um, that's caused by this transform uh, effect being um, being below slice transform. Um, so if you if you're pushing this button, it's not working how how you think it should be. Check that. Put your slice transform effect down the bottom, and then you should see the kind of expected behaviour. Okay, um, so let's have a little think about uh, how this could actually work in a show. Um, 
at the moment we've got our slice transform loaded onto the media here. Um, this can be quite good way of working um, if we load in another piece of content. Say so we've got this video here and we'd like it to play um, full screen in our centre, full screen pip. Um, so uh, we'll get uh, our slices um, and the large centre pip. We're just going to drag that down here. Um, and then test it out, make sure our scaling is set correctly. So we're scaling to the full height. Um, and uh, then we've got our, our thing um, going on. So um, so then uh, we trigger our, our previous content and it's in the, the side pips um, and we can play our, our full screen, full screen, our, our big pip um, central video content. So that's that's quite actually quite a nice way of working in a uh, in a kind of a linear show um, because you can you can use column triggers to change the background um, and have the the correct content. Obviously, you could have a uh, a video camera source um, a capture card as as an input here if you need to put cameras to screen. Um, that's all great. Um, However, it's not necessarily the way that um, you'd like to work. Um, it it can there's there's Resolute very flexible, and there's lots of different ways of, of setting things up. Um, so one thing you might like to consider trying out. Um, let's just uh, get rid of that bit of content, um, and we will. Um, yeah, okay, we'll go in here maybe we could put slice transform on the layer um, rather than on the uh, content itself which um, then means we don't have to drag it on and if we've got a consistent look um, or we want to build a show that in this way we could just drag slice transform out of our clip into the layer everything stays looking exactly the same but when we put another clip in We can uh, get adverts off the top, and there we go. Oh, but we need to go and set its scale correctly, filling the height. So layers aren't necessarily quite what you always want. Um, sometimes uh, it'd be nice to be able to kind of mix between content or mask content or uh, do do various uh, tricks um, with with the content that's within our hip. At which point in time, a layer can be a bit restrictive. Um, but we can add a group, um, and so. Um, we put this into a new group and we drag this layer into the group as well. We've now got a group that's got layers two and three in it. Um, layer three, let's make layer three a mask layer. Um, and we'll just make it do one below. Um, so that any black and any content in this layer now will be converted to grayscale and then that grayscale will map the opacity of the layer below. So if we've got a circle uh, mask, we can just drag that in there, and then, yeah. So that's not working, because we've not put slice transform on our, uh, on our group. So we need to go and find our slice transform, which is currently living on the layer. Uh, on layer two, on layer two. Um, so here's our slice transform, and then we need to drag that into this group, which is a bit hard because it's kind of behind there. So we can try uh, just dragging it, dragging it up, put, putting it on the tab, and there we go. Now it behaves as expected. Our uh, circle 
masks our pip. Um, again, we need this layer to the content in this layer and the mask layer to be set to the same scaling properties as the uh, other content, which in this case is full height. Um, and uh, we can add all kinds of uh, things in there. Um, we can add, add some motion content into our mask layer. Um, and that may or may not give us exactly the kind of thing we're after. Probably not. But you can uh, you can think of ways of using this. Um, the disadvantage of uh, of doing these slice transforms on um, on the group or the layer is that if you need to change the pip positions. Um, you have to come down here um, and uh, and mess about with them. Um, there are ways that you could do that. You can add multiple slice transforms. Um, so if we drag in the large center here, um, this I really wouldn't recommend doing this. It's uh, now, if we bypass that one, we'll end it up in the center. If we bypass that one, and oh, so we can sort of switch between our things there. Um, but it's a very unhelpful way, and when you've got multiple clip, multiple size transforms turned on, it all starts going wrong. Um, so I'd not recommend using using more than one slice transform um, on a piece of content. And, and the same is true of adding a slice transform um, to the media. Um, we can put one on there and it's just not gonna, it's gonna make things more confusing um, because we've now got multiple slice transforms going on. Um, which just really start making everything go wrong. It's not. It's not great. So try and if you want to, if if you want to not go completely insane, um, one size transform in somewhere in the in the resolution flow um, to make these pips work. Where you put it is kind of down to you. Um, if you're changing pip positions frequently. Um, you'll probably find it easiest to, to just keep the slice transforms on the on the content itself. Um, if you've got one look um, with some pips and you just want a layer that has always got the pips in, then putting it on the layer or making that layer a group um, will help you. Otherwise, it's probably easiest just to keep the slice transforms on your on your content itself, although obviously more a bit laborious for uh, for building the show. Um, there's no right way or wrong way to do this stuff. Um, just kind of just play around with it and and see what works for you. Um, a quick note about the masks is they work um, like a standard. Uh, they map the the opacities to. Uh, to a grayscale where black is fully opaque, sorry, fully transparent, and white is fully opaque. Um, if you want to make these things in Photoshop, um, they're pretty easy. Uh, we'll just make a new thing. Um, from the, so uh, we can just um, ah, go back however we want. Let's draw. Draw a shape. I'll use a custom shape tool here and draw speech bubble. Um, and uh, we'll bear in mind that our uh, thing is. I tend to like to merge the layers here. Actually. Just flatten that. Um, and then it's the wrong way around, so we'll invert it. Um, if we want it to have a soft edge, then on a flattened layer like this, uh, you can just add a blur effect. Um, uh, blur. 
That looks pretty soft. Great. Um. Now we can see. We've got our speech bubble. We can uh, mask our content with a, uh, a speech bubble. It's got a kind of nice soft edge on it. Okay, so there you go. Uh, that's uh, scaling, slice transform, um, groups, layers, content, masks. Um, hopefully, these things could be useful for you, and you can put them together into a into a system you use yourself for building the shows you do. Um, I hope it's been interesting, see you next time.